And welcome back. This is MC1 Gamer, and this is the latest installment of the campaign that I am uh, involved in in uh, the, my local area in North Jersey. Uh, mostly played at uh, the only game in town in uh, in Somerville, and uh, it's called Dark Magic in the Old World. Uh, this is again, it's a it's a Warhammer Fantasy narrative campaign. This is the third scenario. If you haven't seen the previous two, please feel free to go back to my channel and watch them. It's a very interesting uh, campaign, and it has some incredible challenges. And uh, the guy Greg, who is running it and writing it uh, is very creative and he's definitely posed some serious roadblocks uh, and hurdles for us to overcome. So uh, this week we have a little bit of a, of a, of a change up. We have a guest uh, player, that uh, a guest army that is actually going to be competing against each and every one of the main people in the campaign. Uh, and these were people that couldn't initially commit completely to the campaign for you know on a weekly basis or bi-weekly basis but they wanted to get some games in and they were nice enough to come in and try to play the spoilers uh, but it was very interesting and it was very worked very well into the campaign so why don't we get started uh, here is the write-up that i was given as the precursor to this and if you don't know uh, just as a, a brief uh, review of what has happened before um, i am playing vampire counts but the theme of my army is the uh, cursed crusade of mount Mosulin. so i have a, a lot of conversions to make my army have a bretonian theme uh, but uh, the obviously there's still vampire counts and what uh, what, what has happened is is that uh, there was there were these elven ruins that I was able to, that that had been the site of a big battle between the uh, orcs and goblins and the empire, and the demons of Sl of uh, Slanesh had poured in right around the same time that the uh, that my cursed crusade had made it to these ruins, with the forest cavern safely in hand to protect the cursed crusade's leaders. The time had come to secure the elven ruin and the potential wellspring of dark magic that it represented. Dispatching a sizable force augmented by many freshly killed goblins and troll corpses, led by the crusade's junior necromancers and whites, the leaders of the expedition were entrusted with an ancient ritual taught by the leaders of Malabod's crusade by none other than Arkin himself. The ritual reopened the rift to the warp of the ruin uh, but give the crusade full control over it, allowing them to draw out Dar, the wind of dark magic, and Sheish, the wind of death magic, to their heart's content. The ritual was lengthy, however, and parts of it had to be performed during the day. That meant that the crusaders' senior leaders, all vampires and older undead harmed by light, would not be able to perform it, them perform it themselves. When the crusade's detachment arrived, it found the elven ruins as abandoned as when they had left it. The army, army immediately set about constructing a defensive line around the ruin as necromancers began to prepare for the ritual. Little did the end undead know that the builders of the ancient structure had finally become aware of the wards around it failing. So, this is essentially what my army is comprised of. Uh, I have, I have 2,000 points, but I cannot take any lord level characters i can't take any um any master necromancers i can't take any vampires uh so this is a big limitation so uh i'm gonna have to build my army accordingly i also have uh a, i have to survive with a, a a specific necromancer until turn the end of turn four in which case i get unbeknownst to my opponent the ability to uh bring back all of my hero level characters uh, to full wounds, or I can actually spirit leech all of his characters uh, against the leadership of of my of my baby necromancer. I have a level, I've, so I have a general who's a level two necromancer. So uh, I can choose either one of those, and of course we play the game out until the end of six turns. So this is a, a big challenge. I'm not going to have any real heavy hitters, and I have to stay long enough. And the, and the other the other addition to this is that this particular caster, this particular necromancer, has to stay within six inches of the elven ruin structure, casting this ritual. Doesn't mean I can't move. I just can't. 
I just can't move out away from uh, being within six inches. So uh, a big challenge, and I know I'm coming. I'm going up against high elves. Um, the uh, the high elf list has some other uh, uh, advantages. Um, it unfortunately only starts out for him at 500 points, and they can only be skirmishers, scouts. Vanguard units, uh, so I know the kind of units that are going to come in. I mean, of course, it's going to be Reavers. Uh, the uh, the other, the remainder of his army can come in at the at, at the end of the sec at the, at the beginning of the second turn. Now he can't charge when he first comes in, which is a big deal because if he just pops in and charges me, he's going to be right up on me because this is a huge center structure for this for the ruins and it's basically going to be almost like a default charge anywhere he shows up. But he can pick the table edge. I can't block him. So if I have units there, he can't be closer than six inches from me. But I can't block him by like populating portions of a specific board edge and preventing him from deploying. So we've seen this before, and here's a good look at what I bring to bear. I have uh, a kind of a circle the wagons uh, a mentality. You see all the the uh, roads that come in. Uh, it basically, wherever there's trees or tree lines, those are all forests. Um, so I know that if he comes in with any chargers. There's going to be some difficulties in in, in in terms of him, where he's going to be positioning, although he's going to have to deal with difficult terrain tests. And I either have infantry or uh, ethereal, so I'm not really worried about that. My army is comprised, is comprised of mainly three casters. I, I have the... Um, the, uh, this trinity of necromancers. Um, so these, uh, th th this is Elvira, Tabitha, and Endora, and they're all from the lore of vampires. They're all level twos. Elvira is the um, is the general. She has an obsidian lone stone, uh, with it, which gives me magic resistance. Three, I figured he may have a level four caster in there. I'm, I'm concerned about any kind of offensive spells, especially things like banishment, that may uh, come into play against me. Uh, but I want to have a lot of invocation so I can pad up my my, my uh, zombies and I can bring back, I can restore any wounds that have been done to any of these units. Tabitha, uh, and that, by the way, my general is the one that is unpainted. Uh, Let's see, Tabitha is the uh, the one that's only white based. She has a dispel scroll, and uh, Endora is the one that is uh, partially uh, black. Um, a prime. Um, uh, we see the return of the uh, my battle standard bearer uh, Thaddeus Karul, who's my white king. He has an enchanted seed and a seed of rebirth, so he can get a base six up regen. And I took that mainly because I have that mortis engine there, and I'm hoping that he'll get a, a five up regen. Uh, with uh, with the pulse if he stays close enough and that will help him with a little bit more staying power because really all I'm looking for here is to get at least to the fourth turn because any damage that I take from from heroes it's back one other thing I do have is I do have a feedback scroll uh, the other units I have I have dire wolves and uh, two units of those um, I have two zombie hordes so one at 21 one at 20 uh, and one of them is has basically all my characters um, I have a unit of uh, 30 crypt ghouls uh, and uh, within that, the uh, the crypt goals is uh, w uh, my lovely statue of Nagash. Uh, I have the old model of Nagash that I decided to convert up and make a unit filler. I thought it was kind of funny, and he's in what I call the um, the Statue of Liberty pose. So if you see him, no, Nagash is not in this battle, uh, but his presence is being felt. Um, so I have again the Mortis engine, uh, and the Mortis engine has. The upgrade where um, I have plus two to when I'm to casting when I'm casting from the lore of vampires because I, again I figure he might have a level four if he doesn't I could gain some dominance uh, but it'll help me when it comes to uh, uh, bringing back and uh, restoring wounds and uh, and building these units back up I'll be casting essentially at level four with any of these guys um, but uh, my biggest concern of course is if I miscast. What's going to happen? He gets to choose the uh, the what what uh, the role would be on the miscast level. That's the downside. I'm thinking I'm only going to be throwing two dice at anything anyway, so miscast is going to be pretty limiting. I'm just looking to heal, restore, pad up, enhance. I'm not looking to go and throw down anything really huge just now. Um, so I also have a black coach, and uh, my, my hope is is that with the use of uh, of lots of magic, I'll, I'll be able to push this thing up to. Uh, to ethereal, to be able to fly, I'll get impact hits. And, um, I have two eunuchs of he Hexwraith, so uh, that's my army and my setup. So here are my spells uh, with, uh, I have an invocation on each one of my three uh, level two necromancers. One of them pulled Raise Dead, one of them pulled Curse of Ears, one of them had uh, Van Hell's Dance. 
and his spells are. Uh, he, what I learned later is that he has a lore master, uh, who I believe is a level four, and has the signature spells from all the lores. So here's uh, vanguards. I move up. Uh, I actually move my dogs from the that were on the other side of the ruins into the forest, hoping that if he does shoot them, that uh, that they'll get you know a little bit at least a little bit of a bonus if he has to move I'll get an extra minus one unless he has some rule that mitigates that but at least I'll have some soft cover and then I move my um, my hexes up so that they're in a position where they could potentially stride or charge either one of his uh, of his reavers so high elves get turn one by virtue of the scenario rules and he immediately goes to shoot down some of my chaff and he goes after those dogs and I kind of expected that. Uh, that he would, I mean, he has got a 10 strong unit of Reavers, and I was worried that he would w completely wipe out this unit of dogs, which is why I put them into the woods as, as, as I did, um, but he only kills off one. So my turn comes, and uh, because he has nothing else that he can do, he doesn't have any casting, he doesn't have any magic, and I soul stride with the closest unit I have of Hex Wraiths through the smaller of the two units, because that looks like a bunch of Dragon Princes that are off to my right, that are just b barely into, this, into the, uh, the screen. Those are actually also Reavers. So he's got a pretty big unit of Reavers there. But this one's a lot smaller. This is only 10. So I march right through those. And I do a bunch of uh, wounds, he takes a panic uh, test, and he fails. So he flees, but he doesn't go completely off the board. And I move my other unit of Hex Wraiths to, into a position where I can help out the first unit, um, or threaten his other unit of Reavers, and move up uh, my other units as so. I think all I did was position maybe my Spirit Hosts and the other dogs, because again, I don't know where his units are coming in on in the following turn. And with through magic, uh, I didn't get a huge uh, ma um, amount of magic here, but and it didn't do anything for the coach. I didn't roll any sixes, but I grow some uh, zombies, uh, and I the the unit of dogs that actually were hurt, I had moved a little closer, to, so I was within range of this spell, and I was able to through the attribute um, just restore that. So I now have uh, a, f a five strong unit of dogs again on that side. So high elves turn two. Uh, and all his units come on board, and he's got a lot of them. He's got a Swordmaster unit uh, with, um, uh, I think, about four ranks by five, uh, so maybe about 20 of them with his level four wizard. Uh, then, in more towards the center, he's got a very scary unit of Phoenix Guard. They're just very tough, tough as nails, guys. Uh, then he's got a unit of Spearmen and uh, Sisters of, uh, of Avalorn, I believe. Um, they have the magical uh, bow shots. The, they count as flaming. So he can neutralize just about everything with these ladies. And they also have huge range with, this, with the shooting. So they're a serious threat to just about everything I have on the board, to my Crypt Horrors, to anything Ethereal. Uh, and they could certainly uh, do a, quite a bit of damage thinning out some of my zombies. So I'm really concerned about them. What I don't see is the Banner of the World Dragon. So, uh, but he moves these guys up as follows. He's not able to charge, but he's right up on me, and we're going to be clashing uh, easily the next turn right into each other. So he uh, declares a charge with the, uh, again, this has got to be like an 18 or 20 strong unit of Reavers, and it's a pretty long charge, but these guys move very quickly, and he just wants to delete one of these um, these uh, hex rays. He just barely cannot see the close one that's in the woods there. He ca magic phase, and he casts, I believe, a, a magic missile spell, and total powers it. Uh, miscast on three dice, which sucks. Uh, I'm going to sh obviously shed a tear if he gets sucked into a warp, just one tear. And he targets that against my, one of my spirit hosts. So he's, again, he's trying to thin down the chaff. So his wizard takes just one wound from the miscast. Unfortunately, didn't get sucked into the warp. And the close combat between his reavers and my hex wraiths uh, he doesn't have any magic weapons in the unit, so he can't do anything to me. Um, I do some wounds to him and take a bunch off. But between his ranks, he charged. Um, I did take. I do lose uh, one due to crumble. So, uh, cursed uh, crusade turn two, and I decide I need a little help there. I don't want to crumble off all of these. Uh, uh, this whole entire unit of hex wraith. So I charge in with a couple more ethereals. He can't attack them, and I'll get a flank and a rear, and that should help me win the day. I don't mind losing one of these units uh, because I'm just playing a, a delay action here. So I charge in my ghouls. There's plenty of ghouls. They get lots of attacks. They get poison. I figure I'm going to... There's a good chance I could take out his caster. And I 
uh, maybe even break them, uh, uh, but whittle them down to where they're negligible. And I can always grow back these ghouls. So I charge his, uh, his sword masters with my horde of ghouls, and then I charge off. I need to get rid of these, uh, these sisters. They're very dangerous. They can just, they basically could delete one unit every turn. So I, I figured they're probably the, the easiest for me to just get supreme impact hits that will just immediately take out maybe half their unit. They're the smallest unit on the table here. So I go ahead and I charge them with the, uh, with the chariot. And I make it in with the ghouls, not a problem. And I also make it in with a chariot, but I, uh, I think on a stand and shoot, um, I also, I take a wound. Uh, I think, he, you know, all the shots, I have a high toughness, uh, and I have a ward save, and I failed one of the ward saves. So I make it in also with the uh, the other unit of hex wraiths and with the uh, with the spirit host, and this is great. I mean, I'm, I, I really feel like I'm going to just wipe this unit out or at least uh, break it down to a point where it's just, I can, you know, I, I, can, I can finish it off. And then I move my uh, my mortis engine up to try and help out the the uh, sword, again the fight with the ghouls against the sword masters. My thinking is is um, I'll give them a, a a regen with the pulse, and uh, if I can get a couple of these guys knocked off with the with the scream, then uh, I can really make that I can just wipe that unit out completely, and then devote this side towards what is building was is looking like his main block but he's kind of jammed up there with my uh, on the uh, on the left hand side with his phoenix guard and those spearmen with my uh, with one of my units of zombies and I'm fine with that I, I can I, I, I want to grow that unit up big enough where it could just hold him there and, and then I'll just wait out the uh, the rest of the game so I have a very small magic phase unfortunately but I managed to get off a bubble then so uh, my, my, uh, the rest of my casting phase, I grow a few more zombies, um, and I'm able to heal the coach. I'm just within enough range where uh, the attribute is able to take a, a wound off, a, a wound, heal back a wound from the coach that was delivered from that stand and shoot. So uh, the Swordmasters fail their fear test, and that's great, because I don't lose, I think they, whatever did, wounds they did take, I managed to regen. Um, and the black coach uh, uh, kills off a bunch of sisters, uh, um, three sisters, excuse me, four sisters from the impact hits, uh, but they 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 don't break, and no losses for me from the uh, against the reavers here. But I absolutely I take off like about six of them, and they panic and run, um, and I run them down, and then I ran with both of these units, uh, both hex wraiths. One of the hex wraiths then overran so far, actually ran into the um, the other uh, reaver unit but we did it we the way we were, did it is that um, it, it's not technically considered a charge so even though I I ran into him he didn't have to test for uh, terror I'm not sure if it were that that's the way it works but that's the way we did it so if uh, you know for sure if it's a uh, different if an overrun into another unit uh, by a terror causing unit would cause that unit to then have to also um, test for terror uh, please post and let us know and the uh, next turn of combat between the ghouls and the swordmasters doesn't go nearly as well. He's not feared this time. Uh, he wipes out a ton of ghouls. I take out a bunch of his swordmasters, but between the ranks, I mean, I don't have any ranks left. I only have the one rank, uh, and he's got two ranks back there. Uh, he may only have the one, but he has got the banner. Um, I think he might also have the standard bearer, the banner stand, battle standard bearer here too. Um, but he, he, he just, I crumble a whole bunch more uh, ghouls, and you can see all I have is that one row of ten ghouls left, and they're not going to last long. So High Elves turn three. He goes to charge his Phoenix Guard into my uh, huge bus of zombies, and the spearmen uh, go to flank the, uh, the uh, Black Coach. And his magic, he throws down Ice Shard Blizzard at my uh, Crypt Horrors. Um, and I forget when I go and have this fight with this huge bus of uh, zombies against his Phoenix Guard. Look, I don't take out any of his Phoenix Guard. I don't think I ever removed one model in this fight. But he doesn't get the rank bonuses because he's in a forest. So I forgot. And I forget for the rest of the, uh, the future fights. Break this unit of, of Reavers. They flee, and they don't go, they, but they flee just enough that they stay on the board. And I go ahead and charge them in my follow-up turn, and then they they have to flee again, and they're they're like an inch away from the board edge, so they they go off the board. So that's the end of his reavers. And I charge my mortis engine into the uh, the swordmasters. Then I move up the uh, the hex wraiths and the spirit host from the other side of the board to try and see if maybe I can get them in and help out for uh, future turns. And uh, I managed to get 
cursive years off on these spearmen. And this is a big deal because it's a big block of spearmen. I know there's a ward save up on the Phoenix Guard, which may have been may have been a better target, but I wanted to try and knock these spearmen out. I figured if I could really, you know, thin them, thin their ranks, that black coach could survive. And it's taking the black coach takes a bunch of wounds. I think it's got like one wound left. Um, you know, he he, I, he he the black coach kills some sisters. I put all the effort into the sisters because um, I'm not going to kill enough of these uh, spearmen that it's going to matter. Um, and I lose some zombies versus the Phoenix Guard. And I do some impact hits and kill, again, a bunch of Swordmasters, exactly what I was hoping. I think I killed, I managed to thin out that next rank so that I think he only has now one rank. And they get to strike back because they have always strikes first, so they're quicker than the rest of my unit. And he destroys the entire uh, Mortis engine. He wipes it out. Uh, I don't. He does enough attacks that I just don't have enough regens to uh, to save against it, and it blows up. And that's fine because you know we're later in the game where it, it's going to have a pretty good decent radius for those hits. But I could wipe out this entire unit. And his level four is in there too, and that would be a huge deal. If he drops his level four, I've got this game. So after the uh, the the Mortis engine explodes. Uh, the co combat res for the rest of the units off to the uh, left side. I lose a few more zombies. Uh, I'm down to now three uh, crypt horrors. I've, my my, my uh, unit of, of dire wolves have been completely wiped out, and the coach pops. So he repositions his uh, sisters to face my hex wraiths on the far left, and he repositions the spearmen so that they have line of sight on my zombies. And High Elf turn four, so he charges the Spearman into the flank of the zombies. This isn't good. And he moves up his sisters, because they don't get a minus uh, a, a subtraction to their ballistic skill if they move. They have, I believe they have a quick to fire or something, uh, so that they, uh, so that's not a problem. He just wants to get within half distance so that he doesn't have that other modifier. It doesn't hurt him to do so. And then he moves up his Swordmaster unit. Now, that Swordmaster unit's been pretty depleted. Uh, that was a full base before we started, but he didn't lose with, with the explosion more than maybe a couple of... Uh, uh, Swordmasters, and he still has his level 4 in there, unfortunately. So he moves up to get within 12 inches, and he throws down uh, a bunch of dice, I think he's 6 dices, Spirit Leech, because he's a uh, lore master, he's got every one of the the, uh, the signature spells, and uh, Spirit Leech is my, and I have a, I only have a leadership 7, because I'm a necromancer, a regular necromancer. So I go and I feedback scroll it. Um, uh, he gets off the Spirit Leech, I feedback scroll, and look what happened. Can you tell what happened? Yep, that's right. I kill his level four with my feedback scroll. That's fine. He had two wounds left, and I managed to get enough fives. But what happens? I lose my general. I mean, it's a level. It's it's a it's a two wound level uh, um, leadership seven necromancer, and she pops. Elvira uh, goes down, and of course, what does that mean? That means that I've lost the ritual. I needed to complete this ritual by round, turn four. This is the top of turn four, and I fail. And, of course, I crumble. So I lose some zombies. I lose another crypt horror. Uh, I lost, uh, um, uh, I think I take a wound on my, uh, my spirit host. Uh, not a lot of damage, not a lot of crumbling. I think that that wouldn't have been a problem, but the scenario determined that I needed to survive with this caster until such a point as uh, the, I got, I finished until the end of my turn four, and I didn't, and that was stupid of me. I should have backed up this uh, this unit and made it harder for him to move close enough to do this. Uh, and I just was thinking I wanted to support these units with uh, with the attribute ability and if any successful castings, I need to get invocation. But in doing so, I set myself up completely to uh, to for this for this attack. It was very smart on my opponent's part, uh, and and you know Jack's a smart player. He's a He's specifically a high elf player, and he knows this army. And he managed to maximize his, the effectiveness of his of his army to complete uh, to take take the win on the on the scenario. Um, I lost the uh, this particular character in the scenario, and of course I could just scatter to the nine winds with the remainder of these characters. And just try and tar him up, but look what look what's facing me. He's got a full unit of Phoenix Guard. He's got a large block of of, of spearmen. The sisters are still sitting there with a nice sized unit that could really finish off. He's I mean the rest of his we didn't even finish the rest of his turn. He's clearly going to finish off that unit of hex wraiths, and he's got a, a, a decent enough amount of, of of spearmen left that they could seriously do damage with anything they catch. So and though the, my Chris my my um, my 
uh, Cryptars are not going to survive that fight with the uh, with the uh, Phoenix Guard. So I'm just basically going to run and just take off and run, and that that is essentially how this game ends. It was a good game. It was challenging. Nice swing. And it was very much in line with the with the story of the scenario, and uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm looking forward to the next game of the campaign. If you like this and if you're enjoying this as well as many of the other battle reports that I'm doing, uh, please feel free to like. Uh, always, You're always welcome to comment. Just be polite, please, uh, if you want to join in any conversations. And uh, subscribe. I have a lot of stuff that I'm doing, as I've mentioned in every video. I've got battle reports. I've got other scenarios. I'm doing all the end-time campaign scenarios. And I am just have a number of discussions about, mainly about vampire counts and uh, the undead legions as well as other things, Warhammer uh, in, in general, and, and maybe some stuff like X-Wing oriented. So uh, thank you, and I look forward to the next time.